when the paintings are, are away, you know, hanging yeah. in a place where the public doesn't see them, like I was taken to see all the First World War art in Ottawa, yes. and it's hanging in a warehouse stored. It's like the paintings are sleeping. Well, and that's the government owning them. If you want to put your pictures to sleep, give them to a museum. <laughs> You know, most of them don't have enough walls to hang them on. That's the most critical thing I've heard you say in the last 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> My children can sell the pictures as well as the museum can deaccession them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, but, but museums are, are able to do things that individuals can't. They can put on exhibitions and bring things to us that we wouldn't see otherwise. In this exhibition at the moment, two exhibitions, that the Art Gallery of Ontario, the Abex exhibition from the MoMA, but also their own collection of Motherwell works on paper is now on for the first time in its entirety. Right. And they own a complete history of Motherwell uh, through these more intimate works. And it's extraordinary to have them out. Now, most of the time, they can't have them out because they don't have the walls to hang them on. So what we said two moments ago holds true. But in those moments when they do have them out, what a great celebration. And that type of situation is somewhat intriguing to me. I also like small museums. I, uh, cities need uh, museums that are of a grand scale before they begin to take on small museums. Uh, you need uh, places like the ROM or the Art Gallery of Ontario, which are, are really encompassing. Um, and they sometimes can have two or three shows going on at one time. But then you go to a city like Paris where there's the Pompidou and the Louvre, and you also get to go to the Picasso Museum, or you go to the Rodin Museum, mm -hmm. or you, know, you, you, you see something specific. You go to the Mayol Museum, which is extraordinary. And sometimes the Mayol Museum will do a medieval exhibition. Uh, so. That sort of a museum, I think Toronto has now reached the point where it's grown to be able to accept that type of activity. And as people collect, I think that you will see m some of that activity come here. In Montreal, I was just there recently, and uh, uh, there's a woman who's opened a small museum uh, in order to show contemporary art that she's interested in. She had a John Curran show. and. Uh, it was just four beautiful little rooms stacked on top of each other in a very beautiful building. Uh, mm. Phyllis Lambert has a wonderful museum to architecture in Montreal. And that's what one hopes Toronto will see. We have it in the Ceramic Museum or the Badashu Museum. Yeah. So we're beginning to have more and more does of this, that. Does we this mean, hope. David, that you're going to open a small museum? I don't know. I don't know. I'm intrigued. We thank you for the Theatre Museum, certainly, because, well, again, it's another small museum that we, we need to work in some way within the larger environment. And it's extraordinary you know, what Herb Whitaker wanted to do and how devoted he was to it and how many other people have been devoted to the idea of a Canadian theatre museum. Yeah. And uh, for it to survive 21 years without a home is an extraordinary testament to willpower mm -hmm. yeah. and you know, faithfulness. And you know, I, I look at Guelph University who has decided that they want a role in being the archivists for small theatre companies here in Ontario. And we have that sort of support behind a theatre museum because it's really like I was saying earlier about how I can put on shows and what a great pool of talent I'm surrounded by because of Stratford and Shaw and the subsidized theatre here in Toronto and the, the writers theaters you know well the same holds true it, with a theater museum they don't have to hold all the property themselves or be a storage container they can be a place that creates out of others resources and have an academic background for them uh, to support them mm -hmm. in their activities so uh, there is great material within the library system and within the universities and it's there, but it needs a way to be to come out and be seen. And the Theatre Museum is the vehicle to do that, so amongst many other activities. Great. Yeah. And thank you for the, being interested in the space for the Theatre Museum. Well, that was a pleasure. Well, the rest <laughs> of it is important. But We're working at it. I'm the guy who pushes the web aspect of the I like the, the web museum. aspect. I think that that's actually 
the most interesting that you know we're now talking about um, social media you know, the the internet changes this interview will be so dated within six months uh, just because of how the world changes around us we used to talk about the internet now we talk about Google and Facebook Google Plus and uh, there I was at a meeting earlier in the week about ticketing and we were discussing general admission now the type of theater I do won't ever have general admission but people have little gatherings of a hundred people that need tickets to it and that takes general admission in my world where you reserve a seat a day will come where you'll be able to buy four seats through Facebook on the internet and reserve six more and send an email to all your friends and they'll be able to buy those six tickets for the next 15 minutes and sit beside you at the event you're going to so that used to take eight phone calls yeah. for someone to buy a ticket yeah. you know that that those little subtle changes in how we buy tickets will migrate tickets out of the internet in general and onto Facebook in particular or Google that's uh, the interactiveness resource and what I push for is the 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 knowledge research resource because yes. I want a young student you know in Fort St. George uh, BC who wants to produce something in his uh, high school or in his community to listen to David talk about producing on the website of the theater museum and start to get a sense of being a genius with nickels and dimes or being a genius with millions.